Okay, it's a day or two later. I'm going to stick some oil in this and see just how badly it cooked. Um, when it came to a rattling stop, there was a bit of a squeak. That's what kind of alerted me. This engine started feeling down on power. There was a little bit of a squeak and then I killed it. It was the kind of squeak that sounds like a bearing seizing up. So, I bought a pot of the cheapest motorcycle 10W40. I'm going to put the minimum amount in, as not to waste it, just so it appears on the sight glass. We'll crank the bike over with spark disconnected to build some oil pressure. Um, and then we'll start up and we'll see just if this engine is cooked, cooked, a little bit cooked, or somehow survived. But I'm not, um, I'm not particularly uh, hopeful. We might also find out where the oil was coming out, because it may well shoot some out at us. As you can see, it's done a brilliant job of ruining the garage floor, so hopefully the leak's big enough to find. Okay, I'm an impatient fella, so we're slightly over the minimum we could have used, but there's oil in there. The um, HT boot is off. Let's give it a spin and see just how bad it sounds. I'm going to give that a break for a second and I'm going to keep going until there's definitely oil in the top end of the engine because I imagine that all fell out as well. Okay, let's put the cap back on and see how bad the damage is. I found where the oil's coming out. <laughs> well, Christ, that's a head gasket. <laughs> Or is it? Or is that coming out of the top of the head? We've ruined the garage floor. Oh dear. Wow. Oh, there's a bolt completely missing out the back of the head. Right there. Right there. That is where the oil is coming from. See if we can find a new one of those. So just for clarity, looking at the other engine, it's, um, it's this bolt here that is missing on that engine. Now, it can't have been missing when I set off um, because this is actually the oil gallery. Um, so the oil's pumped up around this head bolt and it comes into here and into here. So it must have fallen out while I was riding. I presume someone had um, released it previously and never tightened it back up. I mean, I'm not sure why. I don't know exactly uh, what this bolt does. I know it goes through into the gallery and I think it might pinch the end of the the rocker shaft that we saw in a previous video. By the way, it's wobbled its way out while I've been riding and that explains why the oil is so everywhere because it's been shot out at oil pump pressure um, towards the exhaust and round the head. The good news is the engine doesn't sound and I'm really touching wood here, I mean the engine doesn't sound like it's incurred any bottom end damage. It might come to pass with time, but um, the least we can do is I'm going to pull this bolt out here and see if I've got an equivalent so I don't leave one engine without it, lest I forget in the future and repeat this. Um, but we'll pop a bolt in and we'll, um, we'll see how we get on from there. Okay, the questionable bolt is in. I tell you what, the thread didn't feel too smart. I wonder if someone's... Uh, dicked about with that and maybe that hole is um, threaded out a little bit. I think what we'll do is we'll uh, find a new bolt for it and uh, dry it all out, get all the oil out of it and lock tight it in there. But for now this will do. Just to give you an idea of how quickly the oil left, there's the reading on the sight glass now um, and you saw it before and there it all is and there's some cat litter soaking it up on the garage floor. But uh, before we try again, and fill some more oil into it, um, engine degreaser, we'll just uh, rinse the fire hazard off. This one smells like rice. Um, 
if you ever cooked rice and slightly overdone it, the smell of the crispy bit on the bottom of the pan. That's, that's interesting. The entire bike is coated all the way back, including the, the tyre, which I think we'll get some dish soap on that and try and get as much of the oil off as possible before we go sliding down the road. But okay, let's see if the oil wants to stay in now. Alright, we have a legit amount of oil in there now. I mean, it sounds as much like crap as it ever has. Um, but I think the bottom end might have survived, which is impressive. I think we'll um, pop it outside, let it warm up, and maybe I'll even hit it with a pressure washer before it gets too dark. Probably not the right tool for the job, but um, it does a brilliant job in the kitchen and it's less than a quid a bottle, so let's see how it does on the bike. As you can see, I've started, I'm just going to rinse it off with the hose, so getting the pressure washer out since it is actually raining. Well, the exhaust is currently steam drying itself, um, the oil is still inside the bike. It looks a bit worse for wear, um, I don't think whatever's in the degreaser particularly likes the aluminium, it's probably caustic. Um, but we can sort that out by ironically spraying a bit more oil on it um, in the form of some ACF 50. But it looks nice and clean now. And like I say, the oil's still where the oil is supposed to be. So I wonder if it's worth uh, just taking it up and down the road. See if it explodes again. And um, more importantly, I've revved it a few times, but see if it knocks under load. Because that'll be the... Um, the real tell as to whether it's completely banjaxed or whether it's survived somehow. Well, the good news is the engine's not knocking or banging and there are no awful sounds out of it. So um, we might have gotten away with that. It's going to take another 100 miles before I'm entirely uh, <laughs> happy to rely on it. The um, light in here has come back on again, which died, funnily enough, about three minutes before the engine. Um, which, as you can see, is retaining its oil. You can see the offending bolt. Um, however, the clutch is absolutely goosed on this uh, engine. So as you can see, we're in gear. You can hear it labouring and um, there it is trying to pull. Um, yeah, I imagine hopefully the friction plates are just cactus. There's absolutely no resistance in the clutch. Um, I did say when it was off the bike that it didn't feel quite right. But yeah, I've uh, got the clutch wound almost as much of the way in as I can. Um, and even just, yeah, with no cable tension on it at all. Either the springs are cooked, um, or the clutch plates are just worn down to nothing. So I guess our next adventure is going to be trying to find some clutch plates and, um, and swap the clutch over, which shouldn't be too difficult on a bike this small, I don't expect. I just hope it doesn't need any specialist tools. So I'm going to ride this. Honestly, it rides a bit like a um, rides a bit like a, a kind of twist and go at the moment. Oh, skid the front wheel. Yeah, it rides a bit like a twist and go at the moment. So I'm going to twist and go this back. It won't go over 20 mile an hour, but it's okay. I'm not that far from home. Um, and I guess I'll see you next time when some clutch plates arrive. The saga continues.